Now is the time for us to receive from him the word that he has prepared for us today. He has prepared a word for us. Before we came, he knew what was on our hearts. And because he's an omnipotent God, he's able to meet us individually at our point of need. Who else can do this but God? So we are going to welcome the man of God that God has for us today. Please open your heart, open your mind. Whether you came for birthday celebration or you came for something else, you are in the presence of God. And I believe that you may have one miracle that you are looking forward to. And as it says here, it says, expect a miracle. Open up your heart and receive the word that is coming forth. Let's welcome Pastor Stephen Wilson as he brings us the word of God today. Keep on clapping, please. Hallelujah. Our God is good. And all the time. Shall we just bow for a short word of prayer? Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Almighty God, hallowed be the name. Your dominion is forever. Adonai, Adonai, we worship you. Father and our God, we have assembled at your feet this afternoon, believing you are here to bless us, trusting you, O God, that you meet us at our points of need. And I pray, my God, that in the end, all glory and honor will be ascribed to you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's good to be here. And if you feel that way, just tell your neighbor, I'm glad to be here. I was saying in the earlier service that we are still in the new year. How many of us believe that? You know, sometimes you think, the year is far gone. And also, for many of us, the anticipation and the zeal with which we greet the new year is unsurpassed. And then as the days and the weeks roll on, you start wondering. I came across a WhatsApp message that was doing the rounds just before the new year. And it had this to say. On the face of things, it looks, it looks quite factual. It says this, and I quote, don't be too excited about this New Year stuff. Only the calendar has changed. The spouse, the job, and targets remain the same. <laughs> I 
I'll read it again. Don't be too excited about this New Year stuff. Only the calendar has changed. The spouse, the job, and targets remain the same. On the face of it, you might say, well, probably makes sense. But then if you question yourself, why do you so much anticipate a new year? And that's something you have to answer for yourself. But this is a lie from the pit of hell. You see, the truth of the matter is that there can be a difference. There can be a difference. Yes, from the 31st of December to the 1st of January, we don't see much of a difference. But there is always a difference with God. And I would like to turn your attention to the book of Exodus, chapter 33. And this is the background of this particular chapter is, as we all know, God has miraculously brought the children of Israel from Egypt to where they were in the wilderness. And by the way, today marks the Holocaust anniversary just coincidentally. But these people were stranded. And Moses had gone to Mount Sinai, to the top of the mountain, to receive the commandment from the Lord. And whilst he was there, communing with God, the people became very impatient. And they were so angry, went to Aaron, the priest, and said that they were not sure where Moses was. They said, this Moses, we don't know where he is, and we don't really care. Now, what is important at this point in time, they said, was we need to have a God. So, Aaron, make us a God that we can worship and a God that we can ascribe all the things that have happened to us. And the Bible says that Aaron, by virtue of the pressure and things, yielded. And he asked them to go and bring all the jewelry, trinkets, ornaments. So, all the women, you know, women love jewelry. So they went and they brought it in their hundreds. So they molded a calf, a golden calf, and made it into a god. So the Lord knew he, they were doing all these things. Eventually when Moses had finished with the Lord and he was come down, when he saw what had happened, you can imagine his feelings. And the Bible says that he went to God asking if God would take his life for the children of Israel. But the Lord said something. In from verse, verse 1 of chapter 33, then the Lord said to Moses, leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you, 
and drive out the Canaanites, Ammonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but and, and underline this, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. Then in verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then in verse 15, Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? These are very loaded verses. But the important thing I want to stress is in verse 15. And there are a few other translations it says about the New Living Translation says, Then Moses said, If you don't personally go with us, I like these different translations because it brings it back, it brings it down to us. If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. And the King James says, and he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. <laughs> That's evangelist uh, one for you. Contemporary English says, Then Moses said, If you aren't going with us, please don't make us leave. Is the emphasis that I want us to be aware of. I've titled this message, The Presence of God Makes All the Difference. You see, Moses realized that it was the presence of God that enabled them to transit from Egypt to where they were. Everybody knows about the miracle of crossing the Red Sea. Weak Israelis, weak Hebrew people to outwit the Egyptians was a big, a huge miracle. And that couldn't have been achieved other than by the presence of God. So Moses was very well aware. And Moses knew, caught that revelation very early, the revelation that the Lord wants us to catch today, that without his presence, we can do nothing. And this is why coming back to the new year, you know, we try a bit, don't we? And we, some of us get new, new year resolutions. You know, sometimes uh, we have a whole list of them. But come to the time like this, 27th, today is 27th of January. How can I forget? It's, it's my wife's birthday. So, Coming to the end of January, you begin to wonder whether you can make these resolutions work. And you haven't even finished the first month. 
Please, I'm not against resolutions. If you are doing it, God bless you. And uh, hopefully you, you get yours through. But the truth of the matter is that many people find that they are not able to keep their resolutions. It is not by might, nor by power. But it is by his spirit. And this is, this is why Moses could put his neck and say, if you are not going with us, then we might as well stay here and die. Without the presence of God, you can't make it possible. So Moses caught that revelation long ago. And we ought to follow him, follow it up. This WhatsApp message only brings fear. Because they'll tell you the same old. You are going to go through the same old situation. Nothing is changing. But with his presence, things change. Amen. And things will change. Amen. There's, there's no need for us to fear. Moses was right because if the presence of God is not with us, we don't have any covering. We don't have any protection. And in that situation, we are on a very dangerous ground. But the presence of God can abide only when we have relationship with God. And by that I'm talking about having a personal relationship. The Lord Jesus Christ is the key. The Bible says he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. Amen. It's when we give our lives over to him, when we accept him as our personal savior, and it's very easy to do, our destinies do change. And then we have the covering. And when we have the covering, no Goliath can uproot us. Amen. We can stand like David and look straight in the face of our Goliaths that come our way. You know, someone has defined fear, F-E-A-R, as false evidence appearing real. I know sometimes situations come and, you know, it's, it's not easy. But if we can only remember that we are talking about the Jesus, whom all authority in heaven and on earth and under, under the sea has been given to him. He has all power. And he is the one that has been deposited inside of you. So you have no cause to fear. Amen. Yes, the turmoils will come. The situations could be concerning. But you have a God who is able. Hallelujah. He is more than able. Amen. The songwriter says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, 
All fear is gone And now I know Yes, I know He holds my future And life is good Living just because He lives Because He lives you can face tomorrow and I can face tomorrow. We have no reason to fear. It doesn't mean that everything will be rosy. It doesn't mean that everything will be easy for us to go through life just like that. But it means that we've got what it takes to combat the enemy. Amen. You know, in Psalm 23, when David, you know, it's a very popular psalm. Most people, even on the street, can recite this particular psalm. And yet it contains some powerful truths which we might not be able to see because of his familiarity. When he talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. And you know about shepherds? Shepherds protect their sheep. And if you have the great shepherd who has assured you that he will never leave you nor forsake you, Hallelujah. then you can count on him. You can count on him. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. No matter how difficult the situation is, no matter how heavy the terrain, he will still be able to guide you and lead you through the difficult times. And especially in verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. The Lord's promise to you is that don't be shaken. Amen. Don't be shaken. Because he's holding you by the hand. Amen. And he will lead you every step of the way. Amen. Sometimes you think he's so far away or you probably even think that he's not around at all. But the Lord will let you know that his presence with you is everlasting. Amen. And all you have to do is to just trust him. Amen. Trust him. Amen. You know, Moses was convinced that without God's presence, in his life, it will be useless to make any effort. And this applies to us as well, because we can't do anything by ourselves. It is the presence of God that leads us into whatever it is that we want to get into. I know most of us, if not all, have some powerful dreams on the 31st to the 1st. And it's good for us to dream. Why not? But let us remember that dream must be subjected to the will and purpose of God. Amen. And for us to relax. Hallelujah. You know, in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, the Bible says, we should not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything through prayer and thanksgiving, we should make our requests known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and guide our hearts in Christ Jesus. The fact is that God is not intending for us to struggle. Struggle normally comes from the flesh, comes from us. And it is not God's will for us to struggle. There's a lot of hustling. He wants us to relax because of his presence. There's, there's a song that we used to sing in the old days. I haven't heard it. That's why I'm saying this. I haven't heard it for a very, very long time. It says, shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord of hosts. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord of hosts. He breaks the heavy yoke, he breaks the heavy yoke when we shout, shout to the Lord. He breaks the heavy yoke, breaks the heavy yoke when we shout, shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord of us. Shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord of all. He breaks the heavy yoke, breaks the heavy yoke when we shout, shout to the Lord. He breaks the heavy yoke, we break the heavy yoke when we shout, shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Our journey to the year 2019 was possible by God's grace yes. and mercies. Yes. Because, let's face it, many people started 2018 with us, but it didn't end 2018 with us. It just, it's not because we are so good, it's not because we are so powerful, it's not because you are so beautiful, and you are, but it's only his sheer grace yes. and mercy that took us that way. I therefore decree that as you sojourn in this new year, Amen. the Lord will fortify you. Amen. He will make you strong. Amen. Calm every raging storm Amen. and discard every turbulence on your way. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Throughout the year 2019, God shall walk with you Amen. and accompany you. Amen. Wherever you go and wherever you are, God shall be there with you. From the very first day, that is the 1st of January to the 31st of December, he will be at your side Amen. and over you. Amen. The truth is that, and this is not just wishful thinking, the truth is that God has promised never to leave you Amen. nor forsake you. That is his word. And he doesn't lie. He keeps his word. Moses had this revelation. And this is why he was prepared to rather die than do without the presence of God. And when we honor him that way, he will honor us. Moses made it clear that it was the presence of God that made the distinction, the difference between the children of Israel and the other nations. And it's the presence of God in your life that will make you different from the others. I was saying in the earlier service, that you may be with people who don't necessarily agree with you 
In fact, they may not like you at all because of what you stand for. But one thing that is very clear is that they respect you because of what you stand for. And it's only, that difference only comes because of the presence of God in your life. Many people, and I'm talking about believers, who in the wake of things will succumb because, you know, as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, you join them. But when you stand firm for what you believe, then sometimes you attract enemies. But the Bible is very clear. Jesus says we should love our enemies. There are people who will come to you secretly, like Nicodemus, and ask you, what is it about you? I remember in my working days, there were situations when people who had argued with me over the issues would come back and ask for advice. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying this in any boastful manner. But just to say that more often than not, they respect you, they know you have something yes. that you can offer. Yes. They know you have something that you can offer. So hold strong to what you believe. Amen. Don't give up that easily. People may dis you know, disagree with you, that's fine. Especially as, after all, we live in a, a democracy. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You know, in Ghana, uh, the, uh, they were talking about democracy and they were asking people what they understood by democracy. And I was listening to some of the comments and it was like, talk, talk and let me talk some. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, if you say, if you say something, if you say something and I can also talk back, then that's democracy. <laughs> but um, basically, that we are in a free, free society, we are in the free world. So we all can express ourselves in whatever. So if somebody disagrees with you, it's not a, it's not a huge issue. You know, we, can't, we have to agree to disagree and then move on. But you shouldn't be afraid about what you stand for, about what you believe in. Hold on tight to your face, and God will honor you. He will honor you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, but whenever we talk about shadow, then you know there is a light. Have you ever looked at shadow in the dark? No. You know, before you actually think of a shadow, then there is a light. A light beams and then the shadow shows. So that light is always there. And that light is Jesus. So even though I walk through the shadow of death, I shall not fear. Why? Because that light, that light is with me and it will comfort me. It will comfort me. So ours is to stand firm. The important thing is the mindset. The beautiful thing about our faith, our Christian faith, is the fact that we are supposed to believe. If you go through the Bible, especially in the New Testament, it talks about believe a lot. And it says that those who believe, those who believe shall be saved. 
Those who do not believe shall be condemned. It's interesting. If you take time to look at, particularly at the Gospel of John, it helps for you to see where your faith comes from. So it's important for us when we take something in to hold on to it. Don't play with your faith. Don't play with your belief. Don't start going around doubting and denying what you, you have. Because that is what is going to carry you through. The source of your power and strength lies in what you believe. The very common scripture that we quote most of the time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him. So the belief is very important. The faith that you have holding on family. And this is why around the world believers are made to stop believing. Say that they, they no longer believe. And then they can be spared. If you say you still hold on to it then they might even chop your head. And it's not easy because you and I have been, been confronted in those situations to test us whether we will continue. But we have to hold on to what we believe. And it's a belief that takes us to the next step. Our faith is very, very important. But as far as the presence of God is concerned, if you look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. It's not the only scripture, but it helps. You know, Jesus himself, after he's given the last, he's given the disciples the last commandment, he said, and lo, I'm with you always. But Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. That's not quite the point I'm making, but it goes on to say, Because God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So the important thing here is this. This is his word to you. What do you do with it? You can decide to say, well, he says that, but I don't believe it. And that's a choice that you have to make. And sometimes you may probably not say that, but that's the way we are, you are acting, the way you are believing. That is the way you think that, oh, well, I mean, I can't see God. I speak to people and they say to me, well, if only you know my situation, you won't be saying this. How can a God of love allow a situation like this to come my way? You know, but it doesn't change what God's word says. And it's what you do with what God's word says is what matters. The presence of God makes a great deal of difference. God richly bless you. And, and before, before we finish, I want us to just bow our heads down. And if you are here, you don't have a relationship with God. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as, a pers as your personal savior. So you wouldn't know this presence of God that I'm talking about. But if you want to do that, it's very easy. You don't have to come forward. 
just raise your hand and we'll pray with you. Your destiny can change this very moment. So if you are here as all heads are bowed and you would like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, just raise your hand and we'll pray with you. We thank God that we all have a relationship with Jesus. And as we have our heads bowed, Father, we are praying that today you will, Lord, strengthen us in our faith and what we stand for. We pray especially, Lord, that we will always be reminded of your presence in our lives through the good and the bad times that we will hold on to you. We are coming against any form of fear. Lord, those who are struggling to sleep, Father, we just release them now. In the name of Jesus. Those who are struggling to make ends meet, Father, release them right now. In Jesus' name. Amen.